ready to go sailing? Live. It took us 26 hours to travel 80 miles. That's right. <laughs> no wind. <laughs> no wind. We did pick up a little bit of wind after the sun went down and was able to make up a little bit of time, but it quickly died. We came rolling in here to San Francisco, um, probably about 6:30 in the morning. It was really, really dark. The moon had already set. We had a hard time di differentiating between boats and land. We had a couple boats without their anchor lights on, so we went and anchored on the other side, kind of in the rolly section. It took a couple hour nap. Then we, when we got up, we motored back over here towards our friends and set up camp for the next couple days. And just enjoying this nice little bay. There is a yeah, stingray. Stingray, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's all these little ones like this big, and this guy just came in. It's like, wow. Keep your toes out of the water for a minute. Right. We are rested up. We paddle boarded the shore. We're going to go for a little hike. Just to get some exercise and off our rolly boat. Yeah, the anchorage oh. got rolly, so we just went off the boat. Why did it get rolly? Because we had our first Chabasco. I'm like a wet dog just, right now. I'm soaking wet. Just take it a second. <laughs> Explain the surprise Chabasco we're having. I am soaked just as if I took a shower. So's our home. And so's our bed because we didn't heed the warning. Like it went from peaceful dinner to complete. Chaos. Anyways, we're gonna go walk over maybe to this little fishing village, check out this town where our boat's rolling around at anchors. And the best news is our crickets have left. There's a colony over here and they jumped ship and are now with their friends. <laughs> Been a pretty decent hike so far. It's a lot of boulders, so you get scramble a little bit, which is nice. A little bit of elevation, which is really nice. I can sort of get my heart rate up. Um, it smells wonderful. There's some flowers blooming that it's giving off this odor. I don't know what it is, but it, it's delightful. We sit around so much that it just feels great to be on land and, and get moving again, you know? Well, I just made it back down to the wash. The little stream bed down here. There's no wind. It is hotter than balls right now. You sweat just standing here. Um, oh, it's probably 95 and 50, 60% humidity. It's not too bad when there's a breeze, but when you're hiking down through the sand wash, man, it can get pretty miserable. But it's like, in my mind, it's just like being in a sauna. You know, I'm getting a good sweat on, clearing the pores. You know, at least that's what I tell myself so I can get through it. Sometimes you just gotta, you know, embrace the suck, right? Not everything is, is always perfect, but you do the best you can and you make it perfect in your mind, you know? Because you gotta endure just a little bit of hardship to enjoy, enjoy the beauty that's around us. Man, the memories I'm making on this trip have been there for a lifetime. You know, they're amazing. Even the bad ones. There we go. Back to the beach. A little bit of breeze. Really nice. Uh, 
Oh, that's heavenly. Gonna jump in, cool off for a minute. I gotta watch for stingrays though. I've been stung once. If I can see one right there. I do not need to experience that pain again ever in my life. And there's another one right there. Right there. You gotta remember to drag your feet when you come out here. Oh, oh man, that's heaven. Woo, that's nice. Today I'm gonna to get some food ready for our next passage. Depending on the wind, we could have a pretty short day or it could turn into a really long day. And just snacking throughout a unknown just <laughs> amount of time gets kind of old. So I have an arashara that's thawed and ready to go. So I'm gonna barbecue that today and add up maybe some potatoes and carrots I don't know, just see what's in there that I can cook to prepare that we can grab easy with us just sailing and not motoring. Um, sometimes it's all hands on deck and there isn't time to come down here and actually make a meal. So it'll be nice to have something that we can either reheat or even eat cold. So that's what I'm working on today. Okay, so we have orange. <laughs> Carrots and yams, both very bi vibrant. See how pretty? But I need to add something to it. What am I gonna find? I'm gonna go look. This is our current state. Our engine is broken. It is summertime in the Sea Cortez. It's light air. We have been packing the spinnaker around with us for nine, 10, 11 months now. And it's finally time to figure out how to operate this thing so we can actually sail downwind. So I think we've wrangled up enough parts, uh, a little bit of knowledge from the internet. We have no idea how to run a spinnaker, but we are gonna try it. We have a symmetrical spinnaker with no pull. So we're gonna rig it with some parallel beads, run it off our head sail. Uh, we've seen a few videos of people doing it. We've been told it works, maybe not as efficiently as a dead downwind spinnaker, but it will pull us along and help us improve some speed. So that is the next project we're gonna tackle. We're gonna learn how to fly a kite. All right, well, this is what I have. I have a Harkin block that I'm gonna put on top of the mast. We have parallel beads for these things. They are going to go around a furled head sail like this. We're gonna run a tack line down to the bow, down to a cleat that we can adjust. This is supposed to ride up and down on the head sail to give us some height. I have a couple of these things that I'm gonna to attach the to spinnaker to, the parallel beads with a short piece of rope. So in case something really goes bad, I can just cut this and blow the tack and get our spinnaker back down. I wish I had a snap siakle but at the moment i do not have a snap shackle that you can pull in your load so i figured the safety factor will be the line that i can cut if worst case you know worst comes to worst it has a sock with this hard collar on it to raise it up and down it does not have the dousing line or the um the line that raises it so i've got to figure out how to put that on and i got to attach a halyard a couple sheets and if i'm being 100 percent honest i really don't know what i'm doing so this is not a how-to video. This is just a how I did video. Hopefully this just works out well for us. So I'm gonna take this spinnaker and the sock out of the bag and see what I gotta do to this thing. I think I'm gonna pull it completely out of the sock. Make sure it's not twisted and tangled. I have to run a line the downhaul and the uphaul line through it. It does not have a separate sleeve for this line, so I believe it runs on the inside of the sock. Living in a tiny place has its benefits, but apparently we still can't be organized enough. We have lost our line that we need for our spinnaker. 
we brought it back with us and I remember taking it out of Sam's bag so I know it's here on the boat somewhere but we are currently tearing the boat apart trying to find it neither one of us can remember where we hit it it's like a bomb went off We need to feed our line through the sock and up to the top. Just like putting on pantyhose. Not that I wear pantyhose. In order to fly our spinnaker, we have to run a new halyard. That means I have to go up the top of the mast. So I've got my bosun's chair out, I've got my tools, I've got two safety lines ran. Jessica's back at the cockpit, she's gonna pick me up. It's actually just a spare front halyard. This is my safety line, which is actually the main halyard for our sail. I do have to unclip the safety line halfway up to get it around the spreader, and that's it. Other than that, I should be able to get clear to the top. I think we're ready to go. Ready. I've made it to the top. Jessica's pulled me up here, which is a lot of work. Apparently I need to go on a diet. I probably weigh too much for her. Now I just gotta hook this block up. So I've got this ring right here that I'm pretty certain is for a spinnaker block. At least that's what I'm using it for. But while I'm up here, check out the view. It's not a bad place to be. While I was up here, I also noticed a few things. This is our jib halyard. It's got a little bit of wear right there. And I noticed that our light here, winds for our light are like no longer attached. So it used to be attached right here, right through this hole. So all the weight of the cable is pulling on our, on our actual light. So Jessica's tying up some new zip locks or some new zip ties and some tape and we're gonna hoist that up here and try to fix this as well while I'm up here. I think everything's ran, I fixed the light. Got my block on. It swivels. I think that's about all I know how to do. So I'll have Jessica lower me down and we'll rig the rest of the spinnaker up. We're getting ready to leave this anchorage here. And one of the preparations we have to do at the moment, because our motor is inoperable, we're waiting on some parts, is for safety reasons, we side tie our dinghy so that we can potentially use it as a motor. So this is how we do that. We've got this line here, we're gonna do that stern cleat out that fair lead, and it runs down to this point on the dinghy, this attachment point here. We've also learned through experience that you have to lash the tiller <clears throat> on the dinghy motor so it cannot pivot. As the waves come in, the motor wants to spin. And so we're always out there with a boat hook trying to straighten it back out. We only did that a few times before we learned let's just lash the tiller straight. We also have to tighten the knob on the throttle so that it's stiff, so it'll stay at a certain RPM, which is this knob here. All I do is tighten it a little bit so that this becomes harder to twist. If I loosen it, this is easy to twist. So I usually go to where I want it and then I tighten it so that it can't move. Take another line from this strong point here, which is right here. And I tie that one to just a cleat. It more or less doesn't do anything, but every now and then the dinghy wants to kind of like go away from the boat sideways from a wave. And it kind of just keeps it tucked in tight to the boat. Um, for the most part, it's just kind of dangling there though. And also because I got this fear of watching a line break and watching my dinghy just like zoom, zip off away from the boat gone forever can't catch it 
Um, so we've cap we take our cable lock, which is hooked to the bow, and we also tie that to the boat. It's a big um, bike cable that we just tie around the stanchion. Now we used to have a padlock, but the salt water doesn't seem to work too well with that. And we've learned that this cable lock, this bike cable lock seems to work a lot better for us. And the last thing I do is I take the bow line, the painter on the dinghy, and I pull the dinghy in as tight as I can so that the dinghy doesn't surge back and forward as it's motoring, which is what it does based on the wave state. It seems to work for us. We make sure it's full of fuel before we leave. You know, hopefully we just don't have to use it. Hopefully we can sail on and sell off our anchor, which is usually the plan. But we are conservative and we are safe people. We don't like coming into a crowded anchorage under sail power alone. Kind of our backup motor at the moment. It does pretty well. It pushes the boat three, four knots, depending on the wind and the current, so. You ready to go sailing? We are gonna sail off our anchor. So our wind is now coming from the south. We're gonna to try to catch a little bit as, that, as we're lifting up our anchor, propelling us a little bit forward. The wind should gust fill our sails as soon as we start to turn, which I'm guessing we'll be turning to port. I'll pull the jib out to the port side to gain speed to turn around and head on out of here. In the event that the wind goes the other way, we adjust ourselves in the opposite direction and go with it. Off and running, making a whole two and a half knots of speed here. We're gonna get around this point off to our starboard side. And once we get around that point, I think the current's gonna start pushing us north, which will give us some speed. There is this horrendous current coming in. And what's crazy, we can actually hear it. It almost sounds like a small river or small stream running. Like it's insane. We've never been through anything like this before. It's throwing the boat around a little bit. It's making it harder for Jessica to steer it. Like it moves the bow of the boat around probably 15, 20 degrees in a matter of seconds once we hit one of these little eddy things. But I'm pretty sure we're about out of it. And I think what's happening is the tide is running north up the sea, but this bay is way to the west and I think it's rolling around and trying to come into this bay as it rises, which causes this weird little current. The chart said there could be up to five knots of current. I feel like we're in a river right now. There is so much current out here right now, headed up into the Sea of Cortez towards the north that we are sailing 30 degrees off our course and the current is drifting us far enough north that we should hit it. We're effectively kind of dog walking up here. We're actually trying to get to right there. We are sailing in that direction. But I guess as long as you go with it, you don't try to fight it because there's no way we could sail into a five knot current. We'd be going backwards. So anyways, three or four more hours we'll probably get to our destination where I think we're sailing about three to four knots um, due north. And we actually want to go northwest, but the northern, but the current headed to the west is pushing us that direction. So I think we're gonna be all right. We hope you enjoy this episode. Please like, subscribe, and share, and catch us next time as we sail on north.